What's up guys, today we're gonna to be talking about the Aeon Noir. Just so you know, today's video was sponsored by headphones.com. Headphones.com is a premier online retailer of headphones, amplifiers, and now speakers. If you want some of the best audio equipment at the best prices, headphones.com is the place to check it out at. You can find links to the headphone we're talking about today in the description below, as well as many others. Thanks a lot. A quick ethics statement before we jump into this review. Even though these videos are sponsored by headphones.com, they are not asking me to say anything good or bad about any product that I'm reviewing or any other product from any other company. They are specifically asking me to do an unbiased review like all of my other reviews. And just so that you are aware, that is the same thing with the clear video that I just did. That's the same thing with this video and all videos for them moving forward. It will all be the same as all my other videos. Just my honest opinion about a product, good things, bad things everywhere in between. Now the build here is what I would consider to be a 10 out of 10 at this price range. It's supposed to be a semi-mobile closed back headphone and it can go mobile, it's a foldable design. And we'll talk about how you fold it in a second because apparently it matters. It's so well constructed that it feels very solid despite only being 328 grams. And that's despite being a pretty sizable one. It's definitely not a small headphone, but it is fairly light. A lot of what aids that is the amazing uh, headband design that they've used with this knit and all metal. And of course, things like the carbon fiber faceplate are gonna be keeping the weight down. Speaking of that carbon fiber faceplate, lots of headphones use carbon fiber. I've seen lots of things use carbon fiber. And the truth for me is that most of them look pretty cheap, but this one actually, because of the finish on here, I think it looks fantastic. You have this overall gloss black design, which makes sense because noir is the French word for black, and a love it or hate it style of connector, which is this four pin sort of knockoff limo style connector, which I personally like a lot that my buddy Doug doesn't like as much. The ear pads are of course shaped like an ear, which is great here. Uh, they are perforated on the inside on the front, but not perforated on the inside on the back and are overall very, very comfortable. So is the headband. The one and only complaint I have about this is how the pads wear down over time. This is a difficult spot for Dan because on one hand, they need it to be comfortable and they need it to have the sound characteristics they desire it to have. So in terms of like the pad material that you can use for that, all of those changes will affect the comfort and sound quality. So if they wanna keep the sound signature, they kind of have to use something like this. The bad part about it is that over time, these will wear down and a lot of times they tend to wear down asymmetrically. So one pad will get more squished than the other pad. That's the one downside to this build. Another thing about the build here that I think I wanna draw a little bit of appreciation to, um, despite sounding pretty muffled in here, it does not feel compressed inside. You don't get this ear compression feeling where it feels like your ears can't breathe. It still feels relatively not open necessarily, but you don't get that compression feeling. Now, if you read your user guide, like you should, it says that you shouldn't close these headphones up one cup at a time. They say what you want to do is you want to take it like this and just collapse both at the same time. It doesn't say how or why it would damage it. It just says to make sure to do that. So make sure you're doing that. As far as closed back headphones go, this is definitely not the most efficient one. I did see on a website that this was about 13 ohms, but it's at 92 dB for sensitivity. So you are going to want an amplifier with this. Not only is this not super sensitive, but it is fairly resolving and it will tell you whether you're on good gear or bad gear pretty easily. This does ship with three filters that you can insert into the headphones if you choose to. They have various levels of dampening. I'm going with the most damped ones, actually. The white ones with the two notches, these have the most dampening of the three. I'm going to tell you why I'm using these in a second, but it does come with these. I'm going to be reviewing it with the dampening in it because the dampening is provided at no extra cost inside the box with the headphone to be used on the headphone. So I think that this is considered all fair, in my opinion. Noir might be the French word for black, but it is the audiophile word for bass. It is a slightly boosted, slightly warmer bass, but it's still one of the faster and cleaner basses that I've heard come out of a closed back headphone at least. In fact, this is only beaten, in my opinion, by a few really, really good IEMs and a few really high-end, even more expensive headphones like the Sony Z1R. Regarding bass impact and general tonality of the bass, it sounds very clean. It doesn't give you this muddy approach. It doesn't have a lot of bloatiness to it, even though there appears to be a little bit of a bass shelf on it, which is also another interesting sort of unique facet to the sound quality of this. But it does all this while maintaining its integrity until you get really, really high in volumes or on a song that has 
uh, bass that isn't recorded the best. Bass versus the Celesti is quite different. The Celesti has more of a surrounding bass feel. It gives you more room information. This gives you more room information with the mid range and the top end, not so much the bass. The bass tends to have more effective slam to it than on the Celesti. I think that which one people would prefer is gonna differ user to user. Overall though, I think that the bass response on here is pretty excellent given the amount and cleanliness combined. That for closed back headphones is generally hard to do. In terms of tonality, I think that this is a pretty excellent headphone up until the upper mid range where it gets a little weird when it mixes in with the treble response. We'll talk about that when we talk about the treble. But regarding its general tonality for vocalists, I think this is spot on. It's just a matter of frequency forwardness because the way that the bass and the treble works on this, this ends up being a slightly V-shaped sounding headphone. And because of that, of course, the mid range ends up being the one that gets dipped in this scenario where it is dipped a little bit further down than I think I would personally prefer, though it's still not bad performance as far as a closed back headphone goes. The vocal range, I will say in terms of technicality is actually fairly decent if you disregard its frequency position. As far as vocal issues that you tend to run into with closed back headphones, either sounding oddly chambered, maybe slightly tinny, maybe even slightly nasally, depending on the design, this really doesn't have any major notable uh, drawbacks in terms of the vocal presentation on this headphone throughout the mid-range. And this is the same with the instruments. So instruments seem to have a good amount of body and fullness throughout the mid-range, and they seem to develop really nicely because of it. Now, that being said, there is an issue with the upper S and T range on this headphone where it starts to get into the trouble, which is a little bit hot like we're gonna discuss. It's not exactly what I would consider sibilant. It's not a lack of resolution in that area. In fact, it resolves really well there. It's just quite, harsh. It's quite piercing in that area on the right vocalist. Someone like Adele triggers this issue repeatedly for me on this headphone. So for certain vocalists, it can be magnificent. For others, it's really not the best. Now, when it comes to the Celesti, this is something that the Celesti really differs on. It's not quite the same approach. It's definitely a little less technical than that of the Aeon, but it is a little bit smoother. Uh, both are slightly recessed designs for their mid-range, though not like completely absent. It's not like the HD820 situation or anything like that, but it is a little bit recessed compared to the treble response and the bass response. Both of these have relatively the same issue with that. But comparing the Celesti to the Noir, the Celesti actually seems a lot less impressive throughout most of the vocal region compared to that Noir, especially with the Noir's really, really fantastic center imaging for vocalists, which this does have good center imaging for a vocalist, but it's not quite as good as on the Noir. Okay, so as far as trouble response, the technicality and detail coming out of here is truly one of the best at its price range. It is exceptionally detailed. However, it is too bright. It's too bright even with the deepest notch filter that I'm using on it uh, that will knock off the most amount of trouble and it's still a little bit too forward, especially when it comes to above 10,000 Hertz. Now, this is an area that I consider to be like headache territory. This actually gives me a physical headache if I listen to it for too long, which is a little bit unfortunate. Luckily, the white filter that's included gets me barely down to the tolerable level of uh, upper treble response. This is the one major downside with the sound that I just simply do not like. I do think that technicality of the detail, especially things like tonality and overall speed and resolution for a closed back planar is pretty fantastic here. Uh, but yeah, frequency tuning is an issue that I think will need to be resolved with either a really smooth amplifier, maybe a tube amplifier could dock off some of the high end or frequency adjustments like EQ. The Celesti comparatively is a much smoother headphone. I think that people who enjoy a more laid back, more relaxed sound signature are going to prefer the Celesti for the trouble response specifically, but the Noir is inarguably a lot more detailed and a lot more informative for the trouble response. Now, because the trouble response is the way that it is and the S and T range are the way that they are, this headphone actually plays like traditional audiophile music, just so beautifully. Things that are recorded, mixed, and mastered to a T and have just flawless recordings, things like your Daft Punks, your Melody Gardos, your Diana Crawls of the World, those types of recordings are going to sound absolutely magnificent on this, even without the filter in it. And this headphone just represents this excellent, broad, colorful uh, frequency range that those songs can really take advantage of. 
Anything that's not mastered that way because of the trouble response does get a little bit punishing. For me, entire categories of music, for the most part, except for a couple exceptions, things like rap, R&B, pop, hip hop, all that stuff I think is out of the territory for what I would personally listen to on this headphone and feel like I was really enjoying myself. So all of your traditional audiophile recordings or even things like orchestral music can sound phenomenal on this, but it's punishing for other genres. Now, as much as I'm not a huge fan of the trouble response, I would have to be a fool to not recognize that it does have its benefits in one of the biggest categories for audio files, which is going to be imaging and sound stage. This is a very, very, very good imaging and sound staging closed back headphone. It's not quite to the level of making me forget that I'm wearing a closed system, um, but it's really close to getting there. It's very, very impressive. And when you go back and forth in AB with the Celesti, with the Celesti, you sometimes feel like the driver is like right there. And when you feel that, you kind of lose this sense of like freedom and openness to the sound that I feel like the Aeon Noir actually does give you quite easily. Now, what I'm talking about here is most notably in the mid-range and the treble response. Those two regions sound very open and kind of free, so to speak especially when it comes to like a vocalist, they have this very clear defined uh, kind of ball that they can represent. And depending on how it was recorded, it can seem very vast or it can seem very finite and tight. It really just depends on what the song is asking it to do. And I like that ability to be diverse there. The one area where this, I think, loses a little bit of that immersion into the sound staging is actually the bass response. And this is gonna be a give and take here. On one hand, I think the bass response is incredible. I like that bass shelf. It's really cool. It sounds not only unique, but it sounds very good, pleasing. But because of the impact, you actually are a pretty aware of the proximity to your ear with it. It doesn't quite have the delivery of another headphone with a bass shelf like the 1266, the AB1266, which is an open back, very expensive planar headphone. But with that headphone, the way that the bass is delivered, it sounds more like a room environment than it does a headphone environment. Whereas this, sounds like a headphone environment. And I think that's like the one area that's actually not allowing me to fully feel like I'm not wearing a closed back headphone. But even still compared to some of the other closed back headphones that I've tried, this is one of the best for imaging and soundstage. Now I haven't heard the headphone, but I've been told that the DCA Stealth, the higher end closed back planar from Dan Clark, uh, apparently sounds very, very open for a closed back headphone. So I'd be excited to check that one out. But uh, yeah, as far as this one goes, I'd say that the imaging and sound stage for a closed back headphone is either a nine or a 10 out of 10. It's very good. So as far as closed back headphones go, under $1,000, I wouldn't call this the best, but it's certainly probably in the top five considerations in my opinion. I would highly recommend this for people who listen to the right genre type almost exclusively, and I would not recommend this for people who listen to a different genre type almost exclusively. This is a headphone that has a very high ceiling for capability, but it really needs music that can take advantage of it. And if the music is pushing it in the wrong direction, it's gonna be relatively punishing. I would also recommend something like EQ or a very good tube amplifier to really kind of you know, make this exactly the way that you want it. Cause I think out of the box, it's probably going to be a tiny bit bright for some people. Other than that, when it comes to things like build quality, bass response, imaging and soundstage capability, uh, overall detail retrieval and its replication of information. It's actually a very, very good headphone. That's going to be it for the review. I want to thank headphones.com again for sponsoring today's video. Again, you can find this in the description down below. Headphones.com is really trying to build a community around headphone related discussion, measurements, they even have a YouTube channel that you can check out. I will link both the website, this product, and the YouTube channel down in the description below. Thanks a lot for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.